Hello. Welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. I could almost say, like they used to be our gal Sunday, can two kids from Chicago, the South Side, find happiness in Hollywood and as comedians? Well, they could both together and then singly. The book is called Tim and Tom. Tim Reed, Tom Dreesen, with Ron Rappaport have written an American comedy in black and white, published by the University of Chicago. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Connie. And if Tim were here, I'd be saying, welcome, Tim. But your lives kept inter really intermeeting uh, for so many years. Yeah, we, we met, uh, I had just gotten out of the service. And, um, and I was living in Chicago, a suburb on the south side of Chicago, Harvey, Illinois. And I was very active in a, in a civic group called the JCs. And Tim here Reed is a picture yeah. of you at, at the school yeah. wanting kids of uh, don't take drugs. Well, Tim and I, Tim graduated from Norfolk State College, and E.I. DuPont recruited him into Chicago as a marketing rep. So he joined the JCs, and we worked on this drug education program teaching grade school children mm -hmm. the ills of drug abuse with humor. Yeah. And what was so unique about that was the fact that in those days, they didn't teach drug education in colleges or in high schools, mm -hmm. let alone at an elementary mm -hmm. school level. So uh, what happened was we, we did that for like a year, and the program became so successful that the JCs used it as a model program in 50 states and in 22 foreign countries. And one day, a little eighth grade girl that's in the book, yeah. she said, you guys are funny, you ought to become a comedy team. Yeah. And the thought of a black-white comedy team intrigued us because no one had ever done that before. And both of you came from horrific backgrounds. I mean, it was like Charles Dickens on Tim's side and on your side. Well, yeah, I'm, you know, they say, you say horrific. That we both grew up in tough times. I like to think, though, that uh, my childhood was, was just a blessing, just because of the way I look at it. I mean, I, both my parents were alcoholic at one time, but I had my brothers and sisters, yeah. so we bonded together, you know. I shined yeah. shoes in taverns, I set pins in bowling alleys, I caddied in the summertime. I was always very active yeah. as a child. And the, the wonderful thing about my childhood was I had my brothers and sisters, regardless of how yeah. poor we were. We actually lived yeah. in a shack. Well, you said your sister became your mother, really, my, and she my, was, yeah. what, 18 months old? Older, yeah. She yeah. was 18 months older than I. And, uh, but, but my point about that is that Tim was an only child, yeah. so I sometimes uh, while we lived in a shack, five of us slept in one bed. We had no bathtub and no shower, we, yeah. we, and I had holes in my shoes as big around. I still think that Tim had it worse than me because he was alone. At least I had my brothers and sisters. Yeah, which is interesting as you read this book and what Ron Rappaport has captured in the two of you. He's very much an interior person. I, I am sure at times you didn't know what he was really thinking. You're talking about Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Ron did a brilliant job on the yeah. narrative, uh, and everybody who reads the book says that. You know, David Letterman was the first to read the book. He read the manuscript. Yeah. He called me from the island that he goes to yeah. to get away from everybody, and he said I couldn't put it down. Yeah. You must be very proud. He said Ron Rappaport did a brilliant job with the narrative. Yeah. But yeah, Tim was, a, Tim was um, as as much as I'm an extrovert. Tim was more of an introvert. Yeah. And uh, and. Uh, it was, it was somewhat shy to, to you. And yet, in that picture that I just held up, there you were looking like two Ivy League graduates, young boys, young men on the make going. And it was interesting that you both could leave that role and become comedians together. Well, when the little girl said that you guys, you know, are funny, I'd become a comedy team, a couple of days later, we were thinking about it. We we're sitting around telling each other jokes. And we said, You want to try it? See, yeah, I'll try it. Both of us. We're looking for something else in life. He was very successful as a businessman, um, as a marketing rep for EI DuPont. Mm -hmm. I was selling life insurance at the time. My first year in the life mm -hmm. insurance business, I had, writ I had written over a million dollars worth of insurance. I was a member of the Million Dollar Roundtable, but I was bored. Yeah. And so the thought of a black-white comedy team was yeah. edgy. No one had ever done that before. Yeah. Not only, you, you gotta remember in context, the Vietnam War was raging. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> students were protesting all over yeah. America. There were race riots all over America. Um, and yet, in the middle of all this, we decided, well, why don't we go on and try to make people laugh? Yeah. And there's a wonderful story that you tell here where a heckler from the audience is going to say something and you're gonna say, I trained him well, the, the story, the, the story the we back, always tell is yeah. that we were sitting around, we were young guys, and we were working in an all-black club in Detroit called the 20 Grand, 
We used to work what they call affectionately the Chitlin Circuit, black-owned, black-operated nightclubs. Yeah. The Sugar Shack in Boston, the 20 Grand in Detroit, the uh, Club Harlem in Atlantic City, the High Chaparral in Chicago. So these black-owned, black-operated nightclubs uh, uh, were just great training grounds yeah. for us. We're sitting in Detroit, you know, that n writing material. Tim liked to have these writing sessions where we could say, listen, yep. what do we do about this and that? <laughs> and to get the juices flowing. And w we used to get hecklers that were strange kind of hecklers, but I said, Tim, I got an idea this night. I said, and if we get a white heckler, a white guy heckling you, yeah. what I'll do is I'll jump up and I'll say, hold it, buddy, leave him alone. Go get your own. After all, he's mine. After all, you know how hard they are to train. Yeah. And Tim said, oh, Tom, he said, that's kind of kind of a racist. I said, well, I didn't mean it. No, Tom, I know yeah. you didn't mean it. I know you said, we're writing material here. Yeah. He said, but it's a little bit racist. I said, well, Tim, I'm sorry. He said, no, don't apologize. That's what we're doing. We're writing material here. But it's racist. I said, okay, that night, in front of an all-black audience, a black guy jumped up and he hollered out, hey, white boy, what the heck are you doing in this neighborhood? And Tim jumped up and he said, hold it, brother, leave him alone. He's mine. Go get your own. After all, you know how hard they are to train. And they got a big laugh. Oh, yeah. Big laugh. And, and, and Tim later said, well, that was funny. But context. Yeah. See, knowing when to oh, do that kind yeah. of joke. And who from where it was coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting because I thought, gee, that's a great line. And then how it was used. Yeah. Now, somebody comes to you, a good friend, and says, you know, there's going to come a day with success. You're going to split. Well, what happened, when we first set out in show business, Tim and I knew nothing about the business. Before we ever went on stage, the only person I knew in show business at that time was the Dells. They lived in Harvey. Yeah. They had nine gold records. They, lived where, they grew up where, across the street from me. You know, Marvin Jr., the lead yeah. singer of the Dells. It's a black singing group that's still singing to this day. Over 50 years yeah. they've been in show business. So we went to Marvin because he, he knew more about show business yeah. than us. And he said, wow, a black guy and a white guy, a comedy team, what a unique idea. Yeah. He said, I think you guys are going to go very far. He said, but someone's going to try to break you up. And we said, what are you talking He said, there's a game people play called divide and conquer. Why, I don't know. Yeah. He said, but watch out. They'll come to you and they'll say, hey, white boy, you don't need this black guy. You're funnier than him. You could do it alone. Or they'll come to you, Tim, yeah. and they'll say, you know, you, know they, you don't need this white boy. You're funnier than he is. He said, yeah. watch out for them. They'll try to divide you. And lo and behold, it happened. You know? Yeah, and, and who should be doing it but a woman named Della Reese. Yes. And first she comes to you, and then she finds Tim in Chicago. And from there on in, his marriage goes down the toilet, everything. And he becomes, in a way, her fetching. She, he, was, she, he thought she would be making him bigger than he became. Yeah, I, I mean, that was Tim's choice. Tim, whatever Tim yeah. did, I mean, at the time, uh, you know, the team split up, and he went that way. And, and uh, um, why? Only Tim could, yeah. in, in the book he explains in, in the book why he yeah. did all the things he did. But, but he admits that, he said that the, when Tom did his first Tonight, when I did my first appearance on The Tonight Show. Oh, it killed him. Yeah. It killed him. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, but he said he had mixed emotions because he was watching me and, and, and Johnny brought me back for a second yeah. bow and all that. He said while he was proud and, and happy for yeah. me, he said he also was at an all-time low at himself saying, i got to stop this. And the next day he got up and he changed his. He said, ironically, Tom's first appearance on The Tonight Show, the big break for Tom turned out to be my big break as well.